Good Sunday evening, everybody. It's time for another, the last episode of Talking TSR. And there's already sadness in the um in the in the chat, which is is sad. And um, I told myself <laughs> I wasn't going to cry tonight, so um, I'm pretty sure I still won't. So, um, but anyway, welcome everybody to another our 56th and final episode of Talking TSR. To my virtual left, as always, or right, uh, is, because that's virtual, <laughs> who cares, is Rick. Rick, say hi to everybody. Hey, folks. Hope everybody is doing well. Yeah, except for all the general sadness. Uh, yes, up and except everything. for that. So, yes. Um, so we have an exciting, uh, although somewhat depressing show tonight, but we'll get to it. But, you know, you might you might find some some good good news in the show and everything. But we do mm -hmm. have a, I do have a bunch of announcements that I want to get to. Before we kind of jump into it, uh, so um, check out our current crowdfunding going on right now on Backerkit, OAR number eight, Grimtooth's Old School Traps. Um, if you haven't been following along with any of the other various shows, we've had all sorts of uh, Traps Thursday shows. We even had a Traps Thursday on Trap on Wednesday to mix it up, and we had uh, Mr. Steve Crumpton, the Trap Master himself on. Um, so check that out. Uh, Definitely check that uh, crowdfunding out. We are closing in on 3,000 backers, which is amazing. Um, I would also like to announce that Rick and I, see, we're not going to be gone for that long. We're going to be back in this time slot next Sunday night, the 26th One at 8 p.m., and we're coming for another episode of Charts and Graphs uh, on uh, Grimtooth Traps. So um, if you remember from our Dungeon Denizens crowdfunding, uh, we did a Charts and Graphs show because we created this massive spreadsheet of all the, the monsters in Dungeon Denizens. And we decided let's use that spreadsheet. Let's actually crunch some some graphs and charts and stuff and look at some stats. So we're going to do that for Grimtooth too because we have not as impressive of a spreadsheet, but it is actually a fairly impressive spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Um, nonetheless, so we're going to do that too. We've also been running polls during the actual crowdfunding. We're going to actually pull some of the data from Backerkit and we're going to look at some things there. So join us next Sunday night, the 26th. I know it's the end of a holiday weekend, but 8 p.m. Uh, on Sunday. And uh, Rick and I are going to get you through um, a charts and graphs show. Yeah. Next announcement, uh, less than two weeks, uh, actually uh, starting on December 1st, uh, PAX Unplugged in Philadelphia is going on and Goodman Games is going to be there. Um, and we're going to have our own booth and it's going to be exciting. And actually, uh, I'm going to be running apparently a very special game there um, in somebody else's booth. So uh, stay tuned to all of the Goodman Games channels to find out about that. Uh, but uh, if you're in the Philadelphia area, if you've never been to PAX before, um, you got to come. First of all, Philadelphia, great place for all the food and everything. Um, so that's a win-win right there. But PAX is also great. You know, just come for the uh, dealer's room if, if if that's what you're interested. The dealer's room is is, you know, about the size, maybe even bigger than like Origins. So it's definitely a worthy... Um, definitely a worthy uh, a convention to check out. So, um, so that's it. That's my announcements. Um, <laughs> Rick, how's it going? Our final uh, episode. I know, right? I, I'm trying not to get sad, but I'm like, uh, yeah, overwhelmed with nostalgia and gratitude and all that stuff. Um, before I forget, uh, thank you, Chris. I want to thank you on the air for being an awesome partner on the show. We always have this sort of nice simpatico going which i i really appreciate and of course folks you're not rid of the two of us uh i want to thank elena our awesome engineer behind the scenes anytime folks you see a graphic or a bumper or a transition or anything elena's there like you know the wizard of oz behind the curtain making the magic happen and we would not have a show without her so i just want to make yes. sure uh i thank her but yeah, it's like, it's like overwhelming. I'm thrilled that we were able to resonate with people with this show. I think, you know, the way we did, yeah. it, um, you know, it makes me think there was a point back after I had a few modules published for, you know, Goodman and other publishers. And I remember one day stumbling around the internet and I found this Portuguese blog and there was this long post about one of my adventures. I want to say it was Scaly God, but I don't, I don't remember <laughs> And it had pictures and maps and things, but I couldn't read a word of it. I didn't know if it was good or bad. I just knew they were saying like a whole lot, you know, <laughs> and this was before, you know, Google translate was sort of like where it is now, you know, but I, I did eventually translate the page and even try to respond to them. And, and let's just say their English was a lot better than my Portuguese, but I just remember being like 
blown away that these people on the other side of the world, you know, like in some country that I'll probably never have the pleasure to visit, were playing my game, were, you know, getting my thoughts through my words, like my words were bringing them enjoyment, maybe making them forget about their bad work day or whatever. And like, that's the way I try to feel about this show. And like I was talking about these adventures that people connect with that. It's like, you know, Carl Sagan once said, about books he once said like books are miraculous things in that you know you take some wood off a tree you press it flat you put some squiggles on it and all of a sudden it's like you're sharing someone's thoughts it's like the person could be a thousand miles away the person could be dead 200 years and you're sharing their thoughts it's like you know books are miraculous things and i kind of feel like that way about the adventures that we talk yeah. about here i feel like it's this it's a common thread with D and D players, you know that if you go into a big group of D and D players and you say Walter the Drow or you know Tomb of Horrors, you're going to get stories, you're going to get opinions. It's like these adventures or, or in even Walter the Drow, yeah, Walter yeah. the Drow, you know, yeah. <laughs> what did I say, Walter? What you said, Drow? I oh, said okay, Drow, Drow, drow. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what I said. So it's like uh, these days I, I use them interchangeably, but you know, it's like this commonality, like, you know, you get the opinions and the stories and it's like our shared experiences with these adventures are something we kind of all share, you know, it's like all having, having, you know, doing some other experience, like saying we all climb Mount Everest or so, you know, it's like this shared thread that connects us. Yeah. So I like to think the show resonated with people because of that shared thread. So I just am thrilled that we could kind of, share our experiences with people and vice versa through the comments and things and it's just you know uh it's just been a lot of fun you know great yeah well you ninja me because i had written on my sheet to do thank you so yes i was like <laughs> also thank you rick and I, I i have to admit rick you were here for all 56 episodes i was not <laughs> i was not i missed an episode well you kind of had good excuses so <laughs> i was traveling back from either gen con or origins yeah. i forget which i think it was origins i'm not sure exactly but um so yeah so you were 56 for 56 i only made 55 um <laughs> elena i think you did all 56 i don't no, if Thorin did the first couple, maybe. I think he might, yeah. He might have, he might have. Well, you've certainly anyway. done the lion's share of them, that's for sure. Yes, so, so and yes, so obviously there is no show, there is no talking TSR without Elena. So everything that you guys see and enjoy, the good sound, the good quality picture, starting on time, everything, um, you know, it's it, it's all her. It's, it's everything's her. It's We don't do any of that stuff. We're just literally the talking head, so um yep yep and remember we have to remember that anytime she can pull the plug totally totally get that <laughs> so. and we know we're having a good show when we hear her giggling you guys can't hear her but yeah like, we hear it but but we hear from time to time giggling we know we're we're hitting on something when yeah when, when she's like following along and and, and having yeah. a good time so um thoughts favorite episodes rick um do you, anything jump out over the 56 the episodes that we did there's like a couple, but the one that really jumped out that I thought was fun for me, and it's like it was one of our first and, and probably one of the least watched was our fifth or sixth show. We did one on our adventure design mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. touched on some of our favorite like uh, set pieces from different adventures. And yep. Yep. I don't know why, but I really enjoyed that show. And I would say, folks, like if you haven't seen it, go back and find it, you know, Um because we even though we don't specifically hone in on one module for the whole show we really talk about a lot of fun encounters and, and stuff in that show and I, I remember that yeah. in my mind for some reason that really stands out you know i i, I remember doing more prep for that show than any other show <laughs> diving through my collection remember it's like yeah I think there's an encounter in here and it was like yeah no I, that was that was a good one i love that one um, did not resonate with the fans, didn't get the clicks yeah. afterwards. But uh, for me, it was uh, interviewing um, the great Errol Otis. That mm -hmm. was great. And, and sure. more that we didn't really interview him. We just showed him a piece of his artwork and said, tell us something tell about, us about it. it. You know, yeah. Yeah. Tell us something about what it surprised us. What what about this and everything? So mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun. Um, and, and it's been great actually uh, interacting with Errol after that um you know obviously our 50th episode the rpga special was mm -hmm. was really cool for me um but I, I think my favorite and this is not just one episode uh this was actually a series of episodes our our deep dive on uh temple of elemental evil 
Mm -hmm. um, was some of the more popular ones. If you check out on YouTube, uh, yeah. people really, you know, Temple of Elemental Evil, that will definitely get you some some clicks. Yeah. Uh, but we, I, I had a blast in it because uh, mm -hmm. that was such a labor of love uh, for both of us. It was, and you know, we were past it. It was, it was either I think it was published or it was just it's on. It was on a boat or something when we were <laughs> talking about it. Uh, so you know, we were past the actual pain of actually doing it, um, yeah. and it was fun to just finally kind of celebrate it and like i said mm -hmm. I think we made it four episodes i think we did something like yeah. that i think yeah, yeah it was like four, four episodes, episodes on it um yeah and it was great so i had a blast with that so yeah that was some that was favorite. that was a fun I, I think it took us as long to get through all those episodes as it would take somebody to get through the temple but yes. it was like four fun episodes you know Totally. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so we do, we, we are, we do have a, a fun top five that we're going to present a little bit later in the show. Um, and that's, and it's, it's really fun. It's the top five adventures that we didn't get a chance to cover according to each of us on this. So there'll yeah. probably be some crossovers. I'm guessing there probably will be some surprises I think in there too. Um, I'm hoping, uh, so yeah, so, so check that, but, but, um, I think this is time for the big announcement, I think about, about what, what we're going to do next year, um, and how we're not exactly, exactly going away. We're just going to be in a, a little different, uh, format. So, mm -hmm. so let me set the stage, if you will. So, <laughs> um, here at the, uh, at the, uh, world headquarters of goodman games uh we we tend to think that we um we know a little bit of something about adventures because we've published a lot of them and, lot. and not only have we published a lot of them people have bought them and and people love them um and we've been around for over 20 years and we've survived editions after editions and we've done cthulhu adventures and we've done dungeon crawl classics we've done 5e we've done 3 3.5 4e um we've done some 1e things um so we think we know a little bit of something about adventures um back in 2004 yes 2004 dungeon magazine did a little article called the top 30 adventures of all time to celebrate dnd's 30th anniversary so um Next year is 2024. For those mm -hmm. of you who want to do math, we're not even on our charts and graphs uh, uh, show yet. <laughs> we're going to make people do math. Um, and I'm sure a lot of folks unrealize that it is actually D&D's 50th birthday next year. Mm -hmm. So I came up with the half-baked idea of, and, and, and first of all, before I get to this, that top 30 list, we still use it today. Oh, yeah. It's still, people do. People blogs still talk on it, about videos that. List. On it. It's talked about. Yeah. And it's it's like the definitive list, I think. It's because, I mean, there's some other lists out there, but yeah. I think it's it's definitely was the most ambitious list uh, yeah. that somebody put together for yeah. as far as panelists. And I think and that just hit 20 years old or something or thereabouts. It should. Yeah, it should. If it was it's in that neighborhood. Years, yeah. yeah yeah do the math again rick's trying to be up on math here so so i came up with a half-baked idea of next year doing the top 50 classic adventures of all time and we have so many uh contributors at goodman games and most of us are 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 have gray hair like rick and i <laughs> um or no hair or very little hair um, so we figure, um, that we could probably, we, we could probably put a list like this together. We mm -hmm. think we've got the chops to put a list like this together and, and, and do it interestingly. And, and in honor of, of d and 50th birthday, we're going to do the top 50 adventure modules of all time. Now you will notice I did not say TSR yeah. and I also did not say d and in that title. So there could be other game systems in here. I, yeah. I I think we all think that the list will be dominated by the classic yeah. CSR adventures because that's I think when you think classic and when you think some yeah. some of the really informative adventures out there, I think that's where you go to. But but we um our panelists and we have over 50 panelists, not all of them have decided to participate. So we might not end up with 50 at the end. But my goal is to try and get 50 panelists, trying to do everything in 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 the number 50 so um and we're asking each of the panelists to put together their top 25 because once you start getting past 20 it starts it's getting tough. kind of muddling yeah, a little it bit it's a little murky 
yeah, we're we're pretty confident with people giving us their top 25 list. And some people yeah. are not even given can't even give us 25. They're only giving us 12 or 15. Um so we're we're gonna put together the list, we're gonna crunch the numbers, yeah. and we're gonna put together what we feel is the definitive list of the top 50 adventures of all time. Um, and then we're not gonna stop at that. We're going to share that list, obviously, with mm -hmm. everybody, and we're gonna do it via Twitch shows. Uh, just like we're doing with Talking TSR. Um, yeah. We're going to spread it out over the entire year, though. So we're going to do 12 shows. Uh, 10 of those shows uh, from February to November. Uh, each of those shows will be five of the adventures, counting down, starting at 50. So we'll do 50, 49, 48, 47, 46. Um, and then we'll just keep doing that once a month. So we'll not be on every three weeks. We're prob we're gonna probably keep it to the Sunday night at eight p.m. just because that's where people know where to find us. But it'll be once a month. We haven't picked which week it's gonna be yet. Probably the third or the fourth week. Um, but we will present you five of those countdowns, and we'll probably have some special guests on. The special guests will be panelists. Rick and I are gonna actually fill out this 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 survey as well. Um, so, uh, we'll have our thoughts and reflections and even the, the adventures that don't make the list, we'll have a, a list of honorable mentions that we can mm -hmm. share. We're going to do a pre-show in January, which will kind of, kind of fill in some of the backstory about all this, probably reveal who the, many of the panelists are, yeah. um, talk about the list a little bit, talk about how many people we got and who we didn't get. Um, and then we're going to do a post-show in December. Um, which is where we'll really get to kind of dive into things and talk about, oh, my God, I can't believe this one didn't make the list or <laughs> I can't believe this one made the list and got that high. So um, so that's our plan. So, again, this is our final episode of Talking TSR, but we're actually going to still be around for one more year, um, yeah. 12 more shows next year. Um, talking and and we've we've discussed many of these adventures already. Yes. So this will not be deep dives into all five that we do, but we will we'll probably reference some things like when we get to an adventure that we already discussed on the show, we'll talk about some things that we've already talked about. Um, yeah. But uh, but that's our plan. So yeah. um, Rick, do you want to add anything? I know that was a big exposition dump. Yeah. Um, you know, no, but I think it was movie, a worthy but... one, and we're you know we're excited. And like Chris said, folks, you know. We might, I, I really think myself that it will certainly be D&D &D focused. However, other things might trickle in there. There might be, you know. Oh, they are already, I can tell yeah. you. They I are. mean, I can very much see, you know, uh, Judge's Guild, you know, like yep. Dark Tower, say, or something filtering its way in there like it did in the top 30 list that, that Dungeon did. You might see uh, a Call of Cthulhu adventure in there or, or traveler or who knows what <laughs> you know whatever might filter it i mean i myself if i had to come up with my list i might throw in a, a call cthulhu or something so uh you know we're not restraining ourselves and yet certainly a lot of the classics that we've talked about in this show we're not getting too far off the reservation because you know chris and i we we so hate talking about adventures right we just yeah. can't stand it so uh it's going to be a fun year and we're going to keep ourselves on a month schedule so we don't go crazy <laughs> Yes. <laughs> this yes. year wear ourselves out. Um, so yeah, it's 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 gonna be a fun change of pace. Um, I think we're gonna have some really fresh voices and fun guests on. We have a lot of a lot of cool people already lined up, you know, giving us their opinion. So it's gonna yeah. be a great show, folks. Yeah, folks, drop in. I it's already happening. Drop in your favorite adventures already in the chat. I already see uh masks of I can never pronounce I it. I cannot, but, I'm not even gonna try. Yep. Yeah, masks no, of uh, uh, N. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes um but yeah uh again we're we're expecting a lot of fun and this this is going to be more of a journey obviously since we're gonna you're going to kind of not milk it the whole time but we're gonna have a lot of fun with it i'm sure it's yeah. gonna uh bring up a bunch of it's gonna probably spur a lot of research on our part for getting ready for the show when we see this adventure i mean i've never played traveler it's one of my regrets actually that i've never actually yeah, me played neither. traveler when i say never played traveler i never rolled up a character um so i i mean i look forward to actually learning it but i i know kind of some of the the more famous ones that are out mm -hmm. there so um i fully expect something there but i'll be honest with you i've already kind of had a peek of some of the lists that have been coming in um already there's some surprises on there in my mm. opinion so uh i'm looking forward to it my list is already uh done and set aside i'm not like diving mm -hmm. in once i get all the final lists in in the month of december over the holidays, I will probably spend some uh, decent amount of time creating another, yet another spreadsheet 
of all the data and all the uh, everything. So uh, yes, history professor, that's exactly why I said I've never actually rolled up a character sheet for Traveler. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Rapid Ethic, that's, uh, that's, that's a solid one too from the third edition era. Um, we, we let our, um, you know, we, we let our definition oh, yeah. of what a classic adventure is. We just really want it to be probably decades old or at least a decade old. Um, yeah. You yeah. know, there's been some great ones like people might be tempted to say, oh, you got to put DCC 100 on there because of the spinning wheel map. That's great, but it's not a classic yet. I mean, it's like people yeah. probably haven't even played it. So, I mean, that's for the next, you know, 10 years from now or 20 or 30 or yeah. 40 or 50 years from now. I'm sure that one will make the list. So, yeah. and um, we want to hear your opinions, like you're giving us now, because I'm already seeing yeah. this. Right, we're seeing, uh, yeah, like, legacy let, of the like, Savage Kings, yeah. definitely, definitely. Well, that one always if, is on. The if list. you folks remember our very first show, right, yep. we covered a couple yep. DCCs, and yep. we talked yep. about our favorite, some of our favorite DCCs, and Legacy yep. the Savage King made both of our lists. So it did, yes, because um, so, it's and, a, and, a classic. Looking at the comments too, to kind of circle back in the comments a little bit, the history, I, since I just mentioned it, our history professor was asking us, Chris, how we felt doing our first show of this. How we felt doing our first show? Uh, well, yeah. it was during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and this was kind of born out of a top 10 list that uh, that Joe asked me to do with a couple of other folks. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically we had so much fun with that top that top 10 list and uh, yeah. Joe came to me and said, Hey, it's like, how about you do a, a show where you just talk about classic D and D modules from TSR. And he's, you can call it yeah. talking TSR. I think he even came up with the title. Um, and I said, I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, let's, let, yeah, why don't you do that? And I'm like, and I said, well, I need, I need a co-host. And he goes, I don't know. He's like, find somebody. And I'm like, <laughs> well, Rick likes to talk about things, classic <laughs> modules. So I'm like, cause you have to do, we do one of these shows. Cause I do, when I do, um, coming down the 5e pike the first part of the segment it's just myself and it's literally just an information dump on that and it's terrible it's you always got to have that second person it's got to be the <laughs> yeah it's got to be like sports talk radio with a back and forth and everything totally. where folks take sides and everything um so yeah uh so it was it was interesting it was kind of born out of necessity uh with the pandemic but then when uh every the world opened back up and everything a few months later um and a few years later we we're having a really good time on it and yeah. we just kept doing it. And we, like I said, we pretty much did it uh, with the exception of our couple of breaks in, in November, December. And even I think the first year, I think we went right through November, December. And then we did. next year we were like, Hey, we need a little bit we're of a like, break. We need a holiday break. <laughs> yeah. 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 So otherwise that it was every three weeks, pretty much for three and a half years, actually more than three and a half years. I believe we started it in April, I believe. Yeah. Um, no, it's about, yeah, it's about three yeah, no, and a half we're, years. Yeah. So. We're, we're, so. All you know, we're we were getting to the point where we're almost creeping up on four years. Um, yeah. So it was but, and, it was it was people good. seem to be liking it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we're having a good time. And and based on the, the clicks we're seeing on YouTube, uh people seem to really like they like some episodes more than others. So um mm -hmm. there definitely seemed to be an interest there, and we had a, a good time doing it. And but I think it was important too. We I, you know, I was talking to Rick about this earlier, earlier this year. I believe we started talking about it at the staff retreat, if I'm not um mistaken. Uh how you know it's like a, a good campaign, you have to end it. Like, you yeah. know, you can't just let it keep going. Yeah. Um, you know, and sometimes a really good campaign, you actually end it a little earlier mm -hmm. um than you think you want to. So we we probably had another year left in us, I think, to probably do some yeah. classic adventures probably would have started scraping the barrel a little bit near the end there but but we also felt that you know what this is a good time and with the yeah. 20 with the 50th anniversary coming up it was the timing was right, oh yeah so. i i always like those shows in a way that went out when things were in a good place you know whether it's like x files or buffy or one of those kind of geeky shows sometimes some of these shows sometimes go a season or two really past where they should have been yeah. i'm looking at you uh, babylon five yeah and uh we wanted to go out while we were still, you know, kind of feeling strong. Um, and I guess uh, following up on a comment from uh, Keyforge Alchemist, anything from TSR that never saw the light of day, I guess that's what we're covering in a bit. So we are, if that if that answers your question, we are going to bring up some of the modules that we never kind of got to on the show and dedicated a show to them. So we will be talking about that in just a moment. 
Yeah. And and history professor, it's not jumping the shark, it's jumping the boule. Yes. <laughs> Uh, keep it on point here. Keep it on point. So, uh, all right. So that's the big announcement. So, yeah. um, so tune guys, in, folks. Yeah. So tune in. Uh, we will. It'll be on um, our our blog on our website and on social media and everything yeah. uh, when we actually kick this off. I'm guessing it's probably going to be the third week or the fourth week of January. We'll mm-hmm. be back with this. Um, you know, and then and then it'll be that same. It'll be like it'll always be like the third week of the month kind of thing. So you guys yeah. will be able to put it right on the calendar and you'll know when it's coming. And and we're hoping that by the time we start getting near the top 15, the top 10 and the top five, that um that there's going to be a lot of interest in it because we're hoping that people are going to really want to tune in to find out like what makes it. So, yeah. And that's kind of the fun part of this show, too. I, you know, the one thing about ta- talking TSR is I do feel like the longer we go with this show, we're getting a little more obscure in some ways. You know, and we've, we've tried to cycle certain adventures around, so we're not always doing that. But with the Countdown show, we really will be drilling down, I think, every week, and it'll be really fun. So Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, we'll we'll definitely be narrowing down on, on more popular and interesting picks. Um, yeah, you know, from the so it won't be diminishing returns. We'll actually be. I think every show is going to get better and more fun. So, yeah, and we're not going to talk about the ones that didn't make the list until the end because we don't want to spoil about like, well, we already know oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. people will be able to figure it out. So I think people will be able to figure it out once we get like near the top ten. People will be like, well, here's the ones it's going to probably be, and yeah. it's like just don't know the order. So and we um, have to restrain ourselves and not give any hints of the adventures we'll we're mentioning not. in each show. You know, yeah, we'll probably blow it though. If I'm guessing. we'll blow it at some. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it's going to be really exciting. And like I said, when I reached out to all the panels, everybody's been invited i'm already starting to get the list back in and we've asked folks if they want to be actually on one of the shows and talk about their list or talk about um things in general so we'll see if we've got any we got any wacky uh wacky entries on there and Mm -hmm. we have some folks on and they can defend those entries and talk about things because i think you're going to find out ultimately about some really really cool adventures because if Mm somebody puts it on their list there's probably a really good reason why they put it on their list and um, so it'd be really kind of curious to kind of hear what their rationale was, you know, totally. or why something didn't make their list. So. Yeah, no, if somebody's really passionate and put, you know, something yeah. on the list that's a little more obscure to the rest of us, I would love to have them on the show live talking about why, you know. Yeah, yeah. But if somebody puts N2 the Forest Oracle on there, I'm calling shenanigans right now. So, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, so um, with that, if folks have any questions on what we're going to do next year, um, they can throw them in the chat. But we are going to get to our top five, plus I have two honorable mentions. I don't know if mm. you have honorable mentions or I not. I have two. Yeah, so we each have, so it's really a top seven. You guys are really top getting a top seven, seven all right. list here. It's kind a top of. seven. Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> of, our, of our classic TSR adventures that we did not get a chance to talk about um, on, on this show um and it's kind of a it's a definitely it's a bittersweet actually list because like i really wish i could have talked about several of these actually yeah, many of them i right? know I really wish I, I know um but you know we'll give we'll give them a couple of minutes here i yeah. think most people probably can figure out what what many of these adventures are because again if they know they know you guys probably know us by this point and you're like yeah. oh okay <laughs> and there's at least two adventures that i'm certain will be on your list chris that are not on my list at all not on my seven not necessarily because i dislike them but just because other stuff pushed its way up Okay. So we should not be looking at a total crossover here. By oh, no, case. I don't think there will be a total no, crossover. I, I Actually, think, I think maybe only... Maybe, maybe two will be crossovers. I think the rest will be a lot of variants there. I think one. Really? Yeah, my list is wonky, man. I'm telling you. Oh, I think one. All right. Well, wonky yeah. is good. Maybe, maybe a second one. I could see possibly a second one. All Watch, right. it'll be three or four. Because but... there's one I'm... I'm fairly yeah. certain i don't know yeah. about the rest yeah there's there's one i'm fairly certain about too yeah. um and we'll have to get to once we get to that one we got to talk boundaries um so <laughs> uh small town voices wants to know any chance we can get some name drops of people making the list yes that's going to be in the pre-show <laughs> yeah. so we need content yeah. for the pre-show so we're going to talk about panelists um uh in the pre-show but basically yeah. if you know the roster of goodman games contributors and we're talking designers uh editors uh yeah. artists um 
anything anybody who does anything mm -hmm. pretty much for goodman games um most likely has gotten invited so uh yeah. to participate so um yeah these so, folks know and love games you know yes so. So that's what we were basically looking for here. And then, then there's several other people who are, I would say, contributors or not necessarily kind of like Goodman Games adjacent folks um, that have probably worked on some projects and stuff here and there. So, yes, yeah, so we will we will get to that. Uh, definitely uh, get to that down the road. So uh, do you want me to go on first or would you yeah, like to go, go for it? Go for it. All right. So my first honorable mention, uh, I'm sure this one's not going to be on your list. So uh, is H2, The Mines of Bloodstone. Mm -hmm. So, so, and, and again, a lot of the reasons I've said this before, um, to justify my top 10 list in the past and everything, a big reason why, uh, my favorite adventures make these lists are a lot of times the stories and from actual play. Like if my group had an absolutely great time in an adventure, it, it just tends to push that one up even more. The other thing is mm -hmm. the replayability. Um, I know this one for a fact, we've only played it once. Uh, this is a high level adventure. So there was H1 was uh, Bloodstone Pass was actually mm -hmm. a battle system adventure. Yeah. So D&D's roots was in Wargaming. And uh, they did back in the mid 80s, they did a battle that was called Battle System was their their mass combat rules. And um, they did a series of adventures, H1, H2, H3, H4, that were based on battle system and battles and everything. And literally the first adventure was almost all battles, but they were all tied in. Well, with a a, a, a storyline, and it was actually really, really kind of cool. Um, H2 had some battle system parts in it, but for the most part, it was just a classic dungeon crawl. Mm -hmm. um, a high level dungeon crawl, um, and it was just classic in the in the true sense of the word. It was mines, un, you know, going towards Underdark. Um, but what was really cool was there was a lot of NPCs from the first module, H1, actually kind of had a, had a had a part in this one and and one in in particular the the local cleric in the town of bloodstone um gets turned into a vampire by the evil cult and actually turns into a bad guy um mm. and you actually have to fight him in the beginning which is which is pretty awesome so it's like having the experience of going through h1 and then running h2 and then having you know the the living breathing little village change was really kind of cool we had we were using characters that we'd been running for God, probably five six years. They were you know all tenth level plus, um, so they were our, like our favorite characters going through this. So they were the mm -hmm. classics and everything, um, you know. And I will admit this adventure actually has a Tarask in it, um, and it's it's a Tarask that's literally in like a room and there's nothing else. It's just like a Tarask, and the PCs like walk in the room. It wakes up and attacks you, and if you leave the room, it like goes back to sleep, and it like so. Anyway, it's it's yeah, it's 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 probably the the laziest use of of a very interesting <laughs> monster ever. Um, but um, yeah. So somebody needs to write the definitive Tarask adventure. I'm just throwing it out there. Is this the adventure that was like recommended levels fifteen to a hundred or something? No, nope, like that, that was that one of the other ones. That was okay. H4, yeah. That was that was the final one where you actually go and fight um, Orcus himself, where you use 100th level characters. Yes, it got silly at that point. This one got silly at times, too. But again, I just remember the, the memories of it and everything. So mm -hmm. that is my honorable mention number two, The Mines of Bloodstone. So why don't nice. you throw a, uh, an honorable mention out there? No, another one. All right, I will. And, and it's funny, out of this, like, what is it, series of four? Mm-hmm. I think this and maybe one other were the only ones I own. I did not own two out uh, two of the uh, okay, and I, and I did own the battle system rules. So I don't yep. rec I don't recall ever playing it at the table, but I we used it. It was I, cool. Did you? Oh, I yeah. picked yep. it up yep. in the Very hopes cool. of using it. You know, yeah. um, you know, since since then I've sort of used uh, you know home rule battle rules. I guess you could call it. You yep. know, but but I yeah I never I never did the real McCoys. So that's interesting. All right, honorable my first honorable mention. I've slapped two modules together here, but when you hear the modules, I think you'll you'll give me a pass, and Chris will know just because I've said that. I think what they are. Uh, this is UK two, the Sentinel, UK three, the Gauntlet, because I really do, and I think people forgive me here. I consider them a unit. You know, they really do. I mean, you can play the Sentinel and just end it there, but it's kind of weak. You're really the Sentinel in many ways is the lead up to the Gauntlet. Um, two great. I think modules from, you know, TSR's UK branch, uh, cool maps really evolved. Like we've discussed already, I think when we touched on Eye of the Serpent, 
um, evolved adventure design back when, you know, things were still a little clunky when it came to formatting for adventures here in the States. They kind of had their act together over there as far as, you know, de delineating descriptions and, and, and formatting so the poor DM could keep things straight. There was even a monster roster provided of all the monsters, you know, in the adventure. You have a an interesting plot because you have these two sort of sentient artifacts that are, you know, opposing one another and, and even potentially possessing characters. And you really, you know, the DMG had talked all about sentient artifacts and things, but this really in an adventure presented it front and center. Um, I thought the, the locales were well realized. You get a sort of um, a villa and then some Zvart layer, if I'm remembering it right, these tight tunnels in the first one. And then this very, well-realized keep in the second that definitely inspired some work I did. And in the second module uh, in the gauntlet, you have a fire giant assaulting the keep. So you had, you have to do a sort of keep defense, you know, defending these, these, uh, you know, these, uh, the fire giants army or whatever it is that's assaulting the keep. So just a lot of cool things in, in, in these two modules. So th that's my honorable, that's my first honorable mention. Cool. All right. Solid, solid choice there. Uh, my first honorable mention is Adventure B7 Raisha. Mm, um, I figured I that was coming. Love me. So you did know yeah. that? You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. I totally oh, okay. agree that would be. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. Tra Tracy and Laura Hickman. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we've talked Tracy Hickman adventures for it feels like the last six months. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the. The guy can create an adventure. What can I say? Mm -hmm. um, this was a this was different. I, I played actually part of this one at a D and D camp, a four H D and D camp. Um, so that was kind of cool, actually experiencing it as a player, part of the story. Um, and then I remember when the full adventure came out of getting it, and then remembering, oh yeah, I played part of this. I remember this. So um, interesting. You have a a, a charismatic uh, NPC uh, spellcaster, I believe, a priest. Um, that uses the silver tongue to actually manipulate people. Um, and he's trying to release some witches, uh, for three witches specifically, that are trapped um, in a local dungeon uh, in, a, in a forest. Uh, and it's an elven village. And he needs, he needs three comely elves to basically, uh, that the witches can actually like, you know, jump into their bodies and use their bodies, basically. And he gets two of them. And he releases two of the witches, um, and the witches get more powerful when they're released, more of them are released. Um, but what was really cool about this adventure was um, he persuades the elven guards that are of the at this temple to kind of do his bidding. Um, so that when you actually go to the dungeon, there's elven guards and you need to try and defeat them without killing them, <laughs> which is really interesting. Um, and same thing with the witches. The witches are now in the bodies of the elven maidens. So you also need to try and figure out a way to overcome the adversaries, uh, not necessarily with with the blade of your sword, maybe the flat of your sword or the hilt of your sword, knocking people out. But I was always fascinated that it's a great little dungeon. There's the, all the classic tropes are in there. Um, some mm -hmm. classic encounters with, you know, gelatinous cube. Um, you know, uh, just th there's a bone golem, which is interesting because you think it's a skeleton, but it's actually a golem made of bones. I love that. I uh, used that in my writings for some of the earlier OAR books. There were some great puzzles in here. There's a, a teleporting maze. There's a, a puzzle that's based off of labels, wine labels, um, which is just really cool. So I just, it just, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a very, very fun adventure. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I, I love it. You know, it's definitely not on most people's radars um, as far as, you know, one of the beloved adventures, but it's it's one that I think is definitely worth checking out. So mm -hmm. Shade of Icarus has group had the choice of either going and playing Raisha or Castle Amber and their choice. They went with Amber. So Amber is mm -hmm. definitely the the one that's going to get get the more, you know, the more mainline mainline, I think, um, of that. But um, but yeah, so so that's my second honorable mention, Raisha. Nice. I think, you know, we always talk about what we think about when we think about an adventure. When I think about that adventure, those wine labels is yes. what comes yes. to my mind. Agreed. That's <laughs> what I think of as well. The first thing I think about. All right. My my second or first, depending on how you look at it, on honorable mention, this is my dark horse. It's going to come riding in and Chris is going to say, what um, is B5, uh, the horror on the hill? 
no, this, I love, this is this do we, oh all right yeah yeah i mean first off written by douglas not douglas niles you yes, know there you author go. of uh you know against the cult of the reptile yep. god and and a lot it's of bloodstone stuff while we're talking about it and who knows yeah. what else so certainly you have a good author there i think this was definitely one of, we always say this but i definitely feel like this was one of those modules that kind of flew under the radar i, I think against a, against the cult of the reptile gods got such a sort of if you pardon the expression cult following and yet this one i, I still think a lot of people you say and they're like what who what yeah and they don't you know they don't even know what module you're yeah. talking about and i don't know why i felt like it was a really cool there's good stuff in there it's a little you know it gets a little wonky in places you know we're a little maybe implausible but lots of fun to be had you have several very distinct uh levels with really cool maps you know you have a ruined monastery full of humanoids you have this maze-like map full of survivors you've got a sort of deep delve map which of course has a red dragon at the bottom and this is of course mind you for levels one to three so a very young yep. dragon but still you're giving the it's adventures dragon. a dragon to fight so lots of coolness there um i always had a soft spot for this one and and i did have the pleasure of running it at least once so nice. yeah that that's my honorable cool. uh my other honorable mention the horror on the hill yep yeah, a lot of people saying a lot of people don't know the later the latter b series and a lot of people stop playing the b series when their pcs leveled up enough to play the expert totally makes yeah. sense so makes I think sense. you get past b4 and i think yeah, yeah b5 b6 and b7 i know eight and nine mm, you know 10 was pretty good and 11 and 12 was okay but but yeah i think a lot of people kind of missed i missed the boat on um on five six and seven in my yeah. opinion so um cool all right so now let's get to our actual list so here's yeah. our top five yeah. of adventure modules that we wish we would have covered on talking tsr so here we go my number five is uk4 when a star falls um mm. back to the uk's um you know i love me some uk's some some british design adventures uh graham morris the author mm -hmm. of this one um the more and more i see graham morris's name on a lot of the adventures uh that i love i wonder if he should be on that mount rushmore that i would put up there um but I, this is an interesting probably one of the more interesting adventure hooks to start the adventure off there's a, a monster called the memory web and you encounter it while you're traveling and basically anytime it kills somebody it takes their memories and it like broadcasts their memories um and uh and if you defeat the web you get all the memories they come rushing into you and basically that's how you get the hook on the adventure you learn about that there is a falling star um and that there's a sage that wanted it and you need to go to a druid to talk to the druid who can tell you where it fell and then you have to go there and apparently it fell on a a, a, a darrow sell, settlement and the darrow are bad guys they've got slaves and everything so you'll beat the darrow up you get the 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 falling star and then you have to bring it to the the tower of heavens or the heaven house or something um and then you trade it for these books and everything and then they they abandon you and leave you to the red dragons out front <laughs> which is kind of funny <laughs> Um, but again, I really the UK adventures definitely have a soft spot. They were so well done. Mm -hmm. Um, the typesetting was great. Um, the memories that you get, the mem there was a list of 20 memories you get. They reprinted each one like on the top border of every page because it was like it's kind of like a pull quote, like when you see pull quotes in an article, and it's kind of like, yeah, it's important bits and stuff like that. Here's something mm -hmm. important. We're gonna put it up here. Mm -hmm. Um, the maps were spot on. It was a bunch. This is yeah. another thing you'll see that I tend to like in my adventures, even though I am a sucker for the mega dungeon. I love the little tiny dungeons and then go explore this little area that maybe has 10 sites and then go travel and go to this area. Yep. And it mixes it up, gives you a different feel. And this one, you've yeah. got a sage yeah. tower. You've got the Druid's uh, enchanted forest thing. You've got a hunter lodge with giant beavers, I might add. And a beaver yeah. lodge, too. There's an actual beaver lodge. Um, there's the Darrow um, uh, ruins, if you will, which is an underground place, but there's it's actually crumbling and falling apart and like it's still dangerous. And then you've got the Snervnablin um mines a forge at the end so so i love it i love that variety i love the different you know it's it's not all samey it's not like temple of elemental evil where the first level is all humanoids and the second level is more mm -hmm. humanoids and then the third level and it's like so <laughs> i like my adventures to be you know spread out a little bit and and have some variety of the locations in them so mm -hmm. um so that's that is my number five uk for when a star falls nice see we're giving the uk some overdue oh we are giving it some serious love yeah definitely 
and I have I have a copy of When the Star Falls just out of arm's reach. I I have to say, actually sitting here, I I ordered a reprint of it. Nice for my own reading pleasure, which is sitting here, literally in my dining room, and uh, I don't know when. Back, I want to say two thousand eight. I was working the the Goodman Games booth. And I ended up in an extended conversation with Graham Morris, came up to the booth and started, ch- and he's the wow. nicest guy you want to yeah. talk to. And we had a really good conversation about adventures and stuff. So just how do you, how much do you love when you love a person's work and then you meet them and they're actually a nice person and, you know, yeah. you, you can have fun talking to them too. So yeah, just nothing but good things to say there. All right. My number five, and it's been mentioned uh, just recently in the comments, Uh-oh. X2 Castle Amber. Um, okay. Obviously something liked well enough that, you know, Goodman gave it the full original adventures reincarnated treatment, you know, one of one of the first ones, actually, I think. And uh, just big old fun house of a module, lots of crazy encounters, but but interesting encounters, you know, things that keep the players on their toes little garden rooms and ghostly encounters and and different things. And I had no familiarity with the author's work in the module that this is based on and and that kind of thing, but just, just taking it as what it was as an adventure and running it for players. I had a lot of fun with this one enough that I would feel remiss if we were to not mention it, you know, nice big map full of cool encounters. So yeah, just lots of creative fun. Uh, definitely more of a maybe a tournament feel to this one but i enjoyed it and when i ran it we had a whole lot of fun with it so yeah it's my number five plain and simple uh x2 castle amber awesome 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 all right my number four um this is where we're gonna talk boundaries (laughs) yeah my number four is before the lost city have you finished it (laughs) we have not okay okay damn it I'll try not to spoil too much. How far have you gotten? <laughs> we we are we descended to the the city. Yep. The okay, so you're city, in the underground city, and we are crawling around through levels looking for Zargon. We want to find Zargon and beat him up. Okay. I don't know how close we are. I assume we're getting very close. We just fought a bunch of amoeba like creatures, you know, okay. slime creatures or something. So that that's all I can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. It's so a, I will... it's a want the month. You know, we could talk about this, but yes. poor Chris, you know, he's wanted oh, to yeah. talk about this module. I love this module. You know, so. the story is folks, this is one of those modules I always owned for some bizarre reason. I never read it in depth. And later on it developed a following and I, I became aware that this was a popular module and I don't know why I always left it untouched and i always said to myself because i always dm and i said to myself you know one day i'm going to have one of these classic modules i'm not going to know it and i'm going to let somebody you know bring me in and 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 mike ferguson who was an old goodman games alum he was actually in that one show chris missed he was uh guest kind of hosting with me on that show if you recall he's dming and, and it's in a you know, it, we're all adults with kids and spouses and things. So we're lucky we get together once a month. Hence, this has been dragged out over a couple of years now. But he finally, you know, came at me with the opportunity to be a, a player, which is something I do not usually do in the Lost City. So I am holding it aside might be annoying, but it, it is fulfilling itself now because I'm getting to actually experience one of these classic modules that I have no knowledge of whatsoever. So, yeah, I can say we've traveled through quite a few of the levels. I just don't know the final, like, climax or whatever. Gotcha. Well, okay. So, uh, why do I love this one? It's in the desert. It's got somewhat Egyptian feels to it. Um, there's a pyramid. Love the pyramids. Um, love the actual lost city down below, which is cool, which was never fully designed. I mean, it was sort of sketched out a little bit in an outline format, but the side view map was amazing. Mm-hmm. isometric map i think somebody said that was the first isometric map that tsr ever did i thought somebody said that in a previous uh when we were doing the castle white rock uh, castle white rock Ca- castle well, ravenloft yeah ravenloft we we're to doing my, that somebody said that that was the first isometric to my map. to my yeah. research that's the first isometric because a yeah. lot of people feel that ravenloft was and i know yeah. it was not so okay. i believe and, this lost city map was yeah, and obviously you've got the big Cthulhu-like creature, Zargon, who's down there somewhere who needs to be defeated. You've got factions, which is awesome, something that's even used a lot in 5th edition these days. All the catacombs, and again, those catacombs originally were not fully designed. Um, they were just maps, and they just told you, oh, there's big nasty things down there and everything. 
I had so much fun when I did the OAR version of this this adventure mm -hmm. um, to to flesh all that out, to map all those catacombs, to detail the city, actually give the buildings keys and interior maps and everything. Which uh, I'm now trying to survive in, mind you. Yes, yes. But just so <laughs> much fun just taking that canvas that was literally mm -hmm. just like taking an artist's rendition and then filling in all the good parts and everything. So um and and again i just i've had great times um if you read one of the essays that i wrote my first time when i was a player um actually i only had played one session in b4 and that was it and it was after that session where i decided nope i'm gonna be a game master so um so yeah so that is my that is my number four before the lost city nice all right my number four uh-oh before the oh, last look at that. so um i bumped it around on my list but i knew i had to put it in here somewhere and even though you can say how the heck could you put it in your list and you haven't even run the whole thing i've already gotten enough feel for it that there's a lot of things i'm i'm getting why it's popular um because you have a whole lot of levels you have yet more things kind of clearly laid out for the dm to expand upon a lot of complexity here uh, and i don't even understand all the backstory as a player yet but clearly there's all kinds of you know different factions and different dueling factions and and you know complexity going on in the backstory there which i really like i love the cross-sectional map that's so first edition to me how can you not love that um so yeah i i'm totally understanding now as a player why it's so popular i'm still happy i waited but yeah it's so there's lots of coolness there so yeah we had to talk about it at some point so i'll i'll, I'll slot it into my number four uh before okay. the lost city awesome all right yeah great so um my number three so this is one that's probably going to take you by surprise a little bit um yeah because the other two i don't think will uh uk1 beyond the crystal cave mm. so back to the uk's again graham morris has a hand in this one as well this one took a cast of characters though to actually put together um again this is an adventure that back in my early days i actually played the whole thing um and then i had the the joy to actually run it as a game master i believe two times i think um so this is the there's a nice little short little dungeon crawl cave system which is very standard um, got a couple of new monsters in there, a lot of fun. The Mud Men, I'm a huge fan of the Mud Men <laughs> and the uh, the rules, the crazy rules that they used to have. Mm -hmm. They didn't do any damage. They just kind of plopped on you. And if <laughs> your movement was reduced to zero, you started suffocating because you were encased in mud. All sorts of craziness there. Um, loved it. But then once you get through the waterfall, you actually enter an enchanted garden. Uh, time slows down when you're in the garden. And um, you're basically tasked with trying to go... Uh, recover two star-crossed lovers that fled into the cave system and they went underneath the waterfall and then they found themselves in this enchanted garden and then the inhabitants of the enchanted garden thought that there was the creator of the garden and his lover, star-crossed lover, so they were like, oh, and then they drank the magical waters, they lost their memories, and then, you know, you have to now convince them to get out. But what I love the most about the adventure is, again, almost all of the encounters are fey-based, um, once you get to the garden, you're not really supposed to be killing dryads and, and leprechauns, although you might want to really kill the leprechauns, <laughs> um, uh, you know, and the treant and everything, you know, you, you probably need to have, you'd probably need to role play and, and use non-lethal ways and spell casting and really kind of makes, makes your players think really, really hard. Um, about it's you're just not gonna steal is not gonna solve is not gonna win the day here you're probably gonna need to do some social interaction and everything that's the part i think i probably really like the most about the adventure i pr i wish there was maybe a little little some kind of combat like or some encouraged combat maybe in the middle you get some combat in the beginning um through the cave system or combat where combat's acceptable. But, you know, I, I maybe wish that there was maybe some big bad guy, like we talked about in Danger of Dunwater, where you had, the, you had the giant crocodile encounter at the end, where it was like, you're probably really pent up and you really want to swing your sword down. <laughs> Go kill a big crocodile. Yeah. There probably should have been that in, in this, you know, something obvious like that. Um, but still, it's it's a great read. A again, the UK folks, um, they, they know what they're doing <laughs> when it came to these uh mid 80s early 80s adventures so um that is my number three 
Um, not on many people's lists, but UK won beyond the Crystal Cave. Nice. The UK is they're getting a lot of love tonight. They are getting lots of love. Yeah, well, overdue. Um yep. where are we? Number three. Yep. Uh my number three, this is probably not a surprise of people who know my taste, is uh WG4, the Forgotten Temple of Thurisden. Yep. Very much my cup of tea, this kind of thing. Um I don't feel it's a perfect module, but I think there are some little parts of this module, this kind of, you know, very Gygaxian module that really sing. A couple set pieces that I just really love. Um, There's a sort of final encounter, which is placed in an unusual place. And that's, I guess, one of the downsides of the module is you can kind of go downstairs into the lower level and just sort of peter out if you're not careful. But if you find the sort of secret lore filled almost area, you can have this just crazy involved encounter that, uh, the, you know, the encounter show that I referenced, I go into it in the encounter show. So if you want to hear about that encounter, you can just go back to that encounter show and listen to me ramble on about it. But just, I think a wild end encounter and you, Chris, I know in one of the, sh either in that show or some other show, you talked about the initial approach to the temple yep. where they roll like boulders down at you down. Yep. This thing. Yeah. You and know, these the humanoids sort yeah. of yeah. do this defense and that's a great setup. Again, yes. a kind oh, of yeah. very tactical Gygax, you know, where the, you feel like the wargaming background yep. is coming into play there, you know, you know, to, to a good end. Um, and, and there's some nice wilderness and it acts as a really good kind of sequel or capper. If you've played uh, Lost, uh, you know, uh, Lost to Soj Kent and you want to come from that into this, mm -hmm. it, it really can serve as a nice sequel to that. There's some connective tissue there regarding some mountain dwarves and things. So, yeah, just a lot of wonderful, you know, again, not perfect across the board, but there's a lot of really just cool things in this, uh, you know, very imaginative little tiny set pieces thrown about this module that I love. So just for the strength of those set pieces, you know, the sheer imagination there and, and the guy gaxiness, you know, that kind of shines through. Uh, easy number three. Nice. Excellent. So, all right. Um, my number two. All right, my, my one and two is probably not going to surprise anybody, probably if you guys have been following this show. Um, and we're going to give even more love to the <laughs> UK gang. So this is B10, Night's Dark Terror. Um, also somewhat underappreciated in my opinion, but this is an amazing module. Graham Morris, once again, had his hands in this one. Um, so this was billed as a basic adventure that can transition to the expert level. I believe it was for levels three to five or something like that. Um, but um, again, lots of little little dungeons and then exploration. There was a big map. Um, there was a big wilderness map that you can go to different locations around and everything. Um, and I love that. Obviously, we already talked about that. Um, but the set piece is, the, again, the beginning. Uh, the 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 homestead of Susa can uh, Suckiskin, I think it's Suckiskin mm -hmm. is what it is called, um, where it's basically under siege um, and there's these uh, humanoids uh, that are attacking it and they give you a battle mat, a huge battle mat where it's five, you know, one inch by one inch squares and they give you cardboard chits to mm -hmm. show all of the goblins and the wolves and the NPCs. Um, and it's just, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's just, it was the mm -hmm. production quality and it was like a double length adventure. I think it was 64 page adventure. Yeah. Um, and that's just the set piece. That's just the intro. And I believe in that encounters um, uh, uh, show that we did. I think this was my number one, I think, uh, just because of all the production value in it yeah. and everything. And it was great, the tactics. And there was all these little events that happened that it was like, obviously, there was like 50 humanoids attacking all. You know, you can't just do a battle like that. But there are all these little things where it's like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, five hobgoblins and a vampire bat try and breach over here. The PC yeah. need to go respond to it. There's all these little neat little things throughout the entire night. You basically had to survive the night. Love that. But, but then there's a lost Valley mm -hmm. finding a lost civilization and, and kind of a, you know, an ancient city. Um, and that wilderness map, the maps were great. Again, the typesetting was great. The, the layout and everything, uh, the packaging, just a phenomenal adventure. Again, this one came, mm -hmm. I think it was in 84 or 86 so tsr was under a lot of turmoil at this point yeah. um so i think this one kind of gets missed a little bit mm -hmm. i think uh you know i think it gets kind of overshadowed by temple of elemental evil and some of the you know some of the other drama that's going on but um this is just a phenomenal phenomenal adventure um and uh and i i love it to death 
ironically i've never played the whole thing through i've just played bits and pieces of it the siege specifically um never just got it to the table would love to actually get it to the table at some point and actually run it like all the way through so what if you uh, definitely the exception to the rule on this list and it's got to be it's got to be pretty good if i haven't I haven't run it all the way through and i and, it, and i put it on a list so you know, <laughs> there you go nice my um, number two well my number two is b10 Night Star. Oh, it is. I did not know that it was this was yeah. high on your list. So I you can't not be impressed by this thing. I mean, yeah. you did a very eloquent job of it. I mean, this is it's not an adventure, it's like a campaign. It's this totally is, a campaign. This it's is like before is a campaign. It, it's it's a box set without the box, as far yes. as I'm concerned. Probably should have been the a box. Best set. way, yeah. yeah. I mean, you could take all that stuff and just throw it in a box and be yep. like, there you go. Because you have lots of, like you already mentioned, you have many chapters of all different locales. So it's like, you know, here's a chapter about threshold, you know, this, this town yes, locale. I have to mention that. Yeah. Here, here's a, a chapter about the lost city, you know, with these jackal yeah. men in here. And you're given all these wild little maps. And, it, and it's like you mentioned earlier, you're given a lot of maps with, you know, a few little location, you know, a few little spots. And then you go here and you, you know, and that's the what I feel like you get that campaign feel from it because yep. you're traveling around and you're given a bigger overall map of the whole kind of wilderness, you know, area or whatever. So you kind of know where you're going, you know, the players can kind of map out where they're going when they go from place to place. Um, and then you, like you said, the absolute capper is that poster map and those counters, which I never had the pleasure of running. Um, my counters are still unpunched. So, you know, one day, my, one day I'll yeah, sell it on eBay yeah. and people will love it. Nice. But it, it's uh, it's one of those things where I look at it and I say, why didn't I ever run this? You know, it just never came up. But um, I love that whole part. I mean, it was like, I feel like we got one of the first battle maps there, you know, that yeah. they, they gave us uh, just to make that running that encounter even sweeter. Who, What other adventure would do that, you know, would give you a poster map encounters to just play out that little siege, you know, uh, on that homestead. So just lots of cool stuff there. You know, you almost don't know where to start. But for all the reasons you mentioned, solid number two, uh, B10, nice. Night's Dark Terror. Oh, yeah. Nice. Awesome. And we get to my number one. Mm. And I'm sure everybody knows what my number one is already. I think I, I'm pretty solid. Yeah, I'm sure everybody knows at this <laughs> point. So my number one, um, I-12, Egg of the Phoenix. Everybody yeah. knows I champion this adventure. And yeah. I'm like the only person. No. Um but uh, again, I love this. And again, lots of similarities to um, to, to B10. Um, there's the world map, New Imperia. Um, and uh, and then there's a lot of dungeons and separate dungeons. And you're going this dungeon and you got to go to this one. I admit the connective tissue is not as strong. I admit that it's a little bit of a hodgepodge of some other adventures that were kind of, kind of shoehorned together into a, a longer storyline. Um, but there are so many really cool story beats to this. Among them are the reoccurring NPCs. They do some great jobs with reoccurring NPCs. There's one, there's a cleric that is prominent in the beginning of the adventure, and then he comes back as a revenant. Uh, there is a, an evil cleric that redeems herself after she's defeated by the characters and, and comes back reincarnated as a rust monster. Um, and the party encounters the rust monster and figures out, can figure out that it's the cleric. And then actually the, the rust monster has a role to play because there's two iron golems and, and like the iron golems are way overpowering the, the, the PCs, but not overpowering to apparently a, a rust monster. So um, apparently the rust monster can destroy him in like one shot. So, um, so again, cinematic in, in my opinion, but I love the, th there's a holy sword involved. There's a wonderful, wonderful map of the whole world. And you're literally traipsing all over the whole world. NPCs galore. Um, the, 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 the main bad guy who kind of turns into a good guy at the end, Doc, um, is a 20th level magic user, 20th level cleric. <laughs> and there's a fight <laughs> with him at the end. Um, and all of the elemental princes in a big fight at the end. But what's really cool about that fight, because the PCs are there and, the PCs are probably less than 10th level and there's elemental princes fighting and a 20th level slash 20th level magic user cleric fighting. 
But there were all of these opportunities previously to gather allies. There was a Kyrin that you could get. There was, as an ally, there was a Titan that you could get as an ally. Um, there was all of, uh, there's the Revenant can come back. So you basically have this huge battle. You can have this huge battle royale at the end. And we mm -hmm. did. When we played this all the way through, again, we were playing um, quite arguably our favorite characters of all time going through this. Um, we were running this during a summer and we started it before Gen Con and we were running it literally up to like the day before we left to go to Gen Con. We went to Gen Con um, and then as we were driving back from Gen Con, it was a two day drive because Gen Con was like 15 hours, 16 hours away. Uh, we stopped in Aurora, Ohio, and everybody's probably like, wow, why do you know Aurora, Ohio? It's because... <laughs> I got a story for you. Uh, there was a Sea World there, so that's why we stopped there. There was an inland Sea World, believe it or not, back in the day. It's not there anymore, um, and we visited there. So that night, after we drove for like six or seven hours, um, stayed overnight, and then went to Sea World all day in the blazing heat. And then that night, back in the hotel room, we played Egg of the Phoenix. Then we got back in the car the next day, drove the next day for probably ten hours. Got home probably around 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and we played Egg of the Phoenix <laughs> when we got home. And then we Love just it. came from Gen Con. We were at Gen Con for four days gaming. Then we mm -hmm. gamed on the road on the way back. And then when we got home, we were so excited about finishing this up and playing it again that we played that night. I mean, nice. I couldn't... Uh, where did we have that kind of energy back then? <laughs> I mean, it's just it's insane. And the stories that we had... With our car with our favorite characters, we're just I'll never forget them, and it was just it was just amazing, and that's why it's my number one. The stories and the playing. Mm -hmm. um, no, if you read the, if you just sit down and read the module, you'd be like, Chris is nuts forever putting this on his top <laughs> ten list, and it's like probably, but then you throw in the shared storytelling, and that's why it's on my list. So, no, um, but yeah. So anyway, check out I twelve. Um, egg of the Phoenix. There's even a Phoenix in it, and there is an egg. There's an egg also. So there you go. You sold it pretty good. Thanks. <laughs> you make me want to go play it. All right, my number one. I this is one of these cases where I don't know how this ended up as my number one. It's just like the way things shook out. You know, now I'm looking at it. I'm like, that was my number one. But uh, my number one, uh, an another world of Greyhawk one, is a WG five more Dan Canan's Fantastic Adventure. Um, yes. Yeah, I saw that. This is the kind of very famous, you know, mirror dungeon by uh, Rob Kuntz and very old school, completely, you know, in insane dungeon design where a lot of unnecessary corridors going in weird places and maze like, you know, stuff. So it, it, it very it screams early editions when you look at the maps and things, um, but some wildly imaginative traps and encounters here lots of fun to be had you you start with the unopenable doors you know where you're struggling just to get just to enter the dungeon and then there's just some cool traps there's one kind of corridor where you keep walking and walking and the characters eventually have to walk backward to get you know to escape this sort of time trap they're in um and then the ultimate kind of big bad is Kurzit the demon which is this just, you know, demon sort of boss that's just a crazy combat. If you want to design a demon from scratch, go to this module, folks. That's your example. Go to Curse It. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's just lots of little fun touches in here. There's one encounter with some match users where one of them has just recently, like, learned, I think it's the fireball spell, but he hasn't quite perfected it yet, but he's so anxious to cast it that he will cast it, but there's a possibility it'll even end up shooting into his own party because he doesn't have the words down quite right. Like, who would think to do that, you know? So mm -hmm. lots of just fun, cool stuff there. Oh, and, and you can actually play as Mordenkinen and and Urag, which is Gary spelled backward, of course, and uh, Big B and Rigby. So you can even pet, you know play as some very famous personages uh, from Greyhawk if you want. You know, I guess before they ascended to the Circle of Eight or whatever it was. So uh, yeah, just lots of cool stuff here. Um, you know, and later on in later years, Mayor Castle came back. I know, uh, you know, the Dungeon Magazine. You know, they eventually coaxed uh you know rob to come up with another level or two is and as i understand it he has submitted it to them 
as written for first edition and they had to translate it for 3.5 or whatever the edition was at that time and they didn't care they were just so happy to you know get the adventure levels from him because he did so he did expand on it but but here you have the first three levels of mayor castle so uh and i have played it with characters and it's it can definitely be lethal um oh and again hearkening yet again to our encounter show i almost forgot we have the uber dangerous golem yes you you have a golem sitting on the first level that has a poison crystalline sword in one hand and he has a cock a, a whip made of cockatrice feathers in the other that if he strikes you with the whip you you're petrified uh and this is an iron golem by the way so you can imagine how dangerous that encounter is you know but just yes wildly imaginative encounters i think in this so that is my number one where's a polymorphed cleric rust monster when you need one <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, awesome that's that that's a great that, a great adventure i kind of figured that one was going to be on your list did you wg4 was going to be on oh your that's list. funny yeah. yeah i i knew those were on. I, I, figured, I figured you yeah i figured you'd expect thorisden to be in there for sure yeah, but yeah i thought before had a good shot of being on there too because mm-hmm. i thought i figured that because i knew you were still playing it and i I knew you were having a good time with it, so I figured. Oh yeah, be like, yeah. You know, and it was kind of running joke. It was like every year when we'd sit down and come it up is. with our list for the shows. I'm like, hey, can we talk about B4 yet? Nope, I'm still playing it. I'm like, okay, yeah. straight that one off the list. <laughs> so, and I think some of these UK modules certainly would have gotten their shows. You oh, know, they would have given they time. Yeah, um they totally. Would've. You know, so I'm glad we we gave a good, you know, yeah, uh, a little attention to that that side of the pond in this show. Oh yeah. I think so. I definitely think so. So, um, yeah. So that's uh, that's. I guess this is going to be a wrap. Um, yeah. I guess we're going to sign off here, um, in the very very last episode of Talking TSR. Um, I'd like to thank everybody, all everybody in the chat, obviously for participating. I'd like to thank Rick. I'd like to thank Elena. I'd like to thank Joe for giving us the platform yeah. to actually, um, you know, say go do a show and have fun and. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. what we did. We Dark did Master we gave us rain here. And and, th- yeah. and thanks to our audience for watching and putting up with us. It's great. Yeah, totally and everything. So um, and with that, our pearls of wisdom, you know, we're we're pearled out. Like, yeah, you know, I think it's, I think, you know, we you know, basically we'll be back with our new show yeah. next year. Um, everybody keep keep an eye out for when that happens. Yeah. Um, probably the third or fourth week of January we'll be back. We'll start kicking it off. We'll get the word out about these shows. Mm-hmm. They'll be on YouTube and everything. Um, so we expect that you know it might be a little slow go in the beginning, but hopefully yeah. by the middle of the year we'll pick up some momentum and people will know how oh, to find yeah. us and everything. So we're like the um, Phoenix. We're just smoldering down and we're gonna yep. rise up in a new form. So yeah. It's and then it gives us exciting. a whole nother year to think about what we're gonna do in 2025. So <laughs> and maybe there will be something. Who knows? But who maybe knows? We'll, yeah, maybe we'll talk Cthulhu adventures or something. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, good night everybody. And good night, we, folks. remember don't forget we'll be here next uh Sunday next week. at 8 p.m. for charts and graphs of Grimtooth's old school traps. Check out the crowdfunding if you haven't already. Yes. Um, and we'll see you guys on the flip side. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>